Frankly, I think the test match was lost and also the word on the batting uh, performance, please, because there has been only one test century in the last four, five days. The test probably shifted in their favour when we batted in the first innings. Um, because we were looking to bat long and we were not able to do that. And I don't think there was enough application shown by us as a batting unit. Uh, something that we take a lot of pride in. Um, and yeah, we... Uh, Look, these milestones and, and all these kind of things is, is not something that we think about. We think partnerships and we think uh, putting the team into good good positions. So, whether someone has scored a century or not in the last five games is not something that matters to us. We want to be able to have long partnerships and in, in that process, if people get to a big milestone and carry on, it's good. Uh, even if someone had gotten 100 uh, in either innings, still we were pretty much uh, behind the game. So that's what we need to understand rather than thinking about milestones and, and you know what we haven't been able to achieve as batsmen in terms of scoring centuries and all that stuff. Uh, for us, it's about trying to win a game of cricket. And if um, we need to play solid cricket, we should be able to do, do that as batsmen as well. There's just not one way to, to play the game. And, and uh, as a batting unit, we understand that quite well. And our endeavour in the future games is going to be long partnerships and not necessarily focus on getting 100 as uh, individuals. Uh, Virat, could you say uh, England had better preparation coming into this series because they were coming from Sri Lanka, they, whereas uh, India haven't played netball cricket in these conditions for quite a while? And do you think, uh, like, is this going to be the toughest challenge India have had, had at home since 2012 when England won here? Well, that's some, something that was said when Australia won the first test as well in 2017. So, look, it's we don't jump the gun. We don't uh, come to conclusions too early as a side. For us, the focus is the next test match and bouncing back into the series. And something that we take a lot of pride in as a team. Uh, so, our focus is going to be that. What's said on the outside, what is perceived, what is being uh, discussed is something that, that doesn't bother us at all. Uh, we've never really focused on that and we won't um, do that moving forward as well as a team. And... Um, yeah, the, you could say they are well prepared, but if to say they are better prepared than us in our own conditions is, is not an accurate uh, assessment. Um, because I feel that uh, if you look at the second innings when the ball was really turning and bouncing, um, you know, both the sides were, were pretty much similar in terms of, you know, how uh, they went about their second innings. And I, I think more of that uh, challenge uh, in the future games, maybe you can analyze then whether we are better prepared or they are better prepared and you know um, <clears throat> whether this is our toughest challenge or not we are not uh, jumping any guns yet uh, and we are just focused on playing good cricket and winning test matches. Uh, hi Virat, uh, were you surprised by how flat the wicket was in the first two days? We have we are nearing into the days there are too many talks about how green and things like that but were you surprised and did that really push, I mean you spoke about body language, did it affect the bowlers as well because when you see nothing happening off the wicket does it affect the bowlers? Uh, look, the reality of the situation is yes, the wicket was very flat and slow. Um, I'm not saying that that is an excuse that we will, um, you know, hold on to as a team. But you have to understand the reality of what went on, and that was the case in the first two days. Even day three, I think after T is when the wicket really started to change. And um, beyond that, uh, before that. Uh, it was just a very flat and slow pitch. Um, and look, when you get big runs on the board, even when the wicket is flat, uh, the opposition is invariably put under pressure. So, you have to understand that those are the dynamics of cricket and how the game moves forward and how the, the game works. Uh, but yeah, it was flat and slow and um, the quality of the ball, honestly, as well, uh, wasn't something that, that we were, uh, you know, very... Um, pleased to see because that's been an issue in the past as well and just for the ball seem to completely be destroyed in 60 overs is not something that you experience as a test side and something that you know any test side could be prepared for so yeah that was the reality of the first two days but having said that not an excuse England played better cricket than us they deserve to win. Virat in hindsight Kepas Nadeem for Kuldeep Jadav maybe is it something you want to look back on? Not really not at all, because when you're playing two off spinners, Kuldeep more or less becomes a similar kind of spinner taking the ball away. So you need variety in the bowling attack. Uh, we were quite clear on what we wanted to play, what combination we wanted to play. And uh, there are no regrets whatsoever on that decision. And uh, moving forward, uh, we will think of combinations which brings us variety uh, as a bowling attack. And not, not one-dimensional, where the ball is only turning away from the bat. So these things are very important to understand. 
Virat just wanted to know like uh, Ajinkya as a captain had a great series in Australia but as a batsman since the MCG test where he scored 100 uh, uh, he hasn't been in the best of forms like what is going wrong like you you look like playing on a different pitch and probably Ajinkya or Shubman they look like playing on a different pitch today when facing Jimmy Anderson like what's going wrong with Ajinkya? Well, taking Shubman's name, I don't think anyone batted better than him in this test match. No, uh, uh, dismissal, I mean. Uh, just dismissal, I got bold as well. So, you know, it's, look, if, if you're trying to dig something out, you're not going to get anything because there's nothing. Ajinkya is, I've said this many a times in the past as well, along with Pujara, he is our uh, most important test batsman and he's going to continue to be. Um, we believe in his abilities, we have believed in his abilities for a long time now and he's an impact player. Uh, if you're talking about the MCG test, he stood up and he scored 100 when the team wanted it most. So, you know, you, you can look at number of innings and what happens from there on. The reality of the situation is we won the series in Australia. Um, and here there's just one test, two innings and both, I mean, today, yes, you can put that innings aside. But in the first innings, he wanted to score a boundary. It was a it was a brilliant catch by Joe that that got rid of him. So if it, that goes for a boundary, he gets runs in the first innings. Then we're not having this conversation. So there are absolutely no issues. Everyone's playing really well. Um, we just need to be focused a lot more. Understand that Test victories are earned uh, in any conditions, whether they are your own or you're playing away from home. Nothing is given in Test cricket, and we need to um, you know be aware of that reality and work together as a team to keep putting a lot of pressure on the opposition. That's our focus. Yeah, hi. Uh, James Anderson was like, exceptional today. I mean, it, uh, back in 2012-13 also during the Kolkata test, he took some important wickets, including yours. And I think the then captain of the to me said that he made the difference. Do you do you think uh, with his reverse swing, the way he bowled, do you think that someone like Umesh or Shami, one of the two, could, uh, could have been, you know, some kind of an asset for you or you missed them? I mean, I, I know Ishant also pulled a good reverse swing also. But do you think that uh, those guys, one of those guys could have made a, a difference? Well, they're not here. So, um, whether they could have or would have is, is irrelevant. Look, we are not a side that goes into what ifs and what could have been or what should have been. If you're adding to what could have been, then if you're talking about someone like Jaddu playing this test as well, then you're talking about a totally different situation. So let's not go there. Let's let's be aware of the fact that we have a very strong team. We have individuals who are in front of us who we believe that will do the job for the team. And um, in one game where the execution hasn't happened, um, does not mean that it won't happen again. Um, so we have to keep believing in our process. Um, we have had a lot of success as a team and we have to believe that, you know, as a side, if we play good cricket, more good things are going to happen in future and not think of what if this player was here or that player was here. All three of them are injured. So, you know, we have bench strength. You saw the, the ex true example of that bench strength in Australia as well. And we totally believe in the players that we have in the team and we are confident that we're going to bounce back strong and uh, we're really looking forward to being on the field again. During the pre conferences, we were listening that like you, uh, Rahane also said that we are taking one, one, one match at a time. But seeing that England had now couple India in the WTC standings, so how do we as a team will now look the games which are ahead of us? Uh, the same way that we have till now. Nothing changes for us. Um, if if suddenly the, the rules can change when you are in lockdown, nothing is in your control at all. The only thing that's in your control is what you do on the field. So, we're not bothered at all about the table or the things that are going on on the outside. Um, for some things, there's no logic. For some things, you, you can have a, a, a debate for hours and as much as you want. But the only thing that you can control as a side to an extent is playing good cricket. And that's our only focus. Regardless of who's on top of the table, before this test match, you're not even thinking of, you know, England's chances and now suddenly you're talking about they're on top of the table. So, these things keep changing all the time. Uh, you don't play for these things. You play to play good cricket and win games of cricket. And our focus is solely that. And we are prepared to do the hard work and go through the hard grind in the coming games to be able to do that. Virat, actually, this is pretty much an extension of the first question about how much, how much did uh, the first innings batting really affect your game going ahead? Because... It was also around the time the conditions are sort of getting difficult for the batsmen, but how much was that a big impact? Uh, it doesn't change anything for us. 
last time around when they came to India, they got 500 plus in the first innings in the first game. But the difference was we also got 400 plus in the first innings. And that's why they could not get close to getting a result on day 5 because we could bat out a draw. So, things are not as complicated as uh, they might seem to be or they are, they are made to be. For us, we understand as a side, if you're adding 80 runs to that score in the first innings and, and taking two and a half hours more into the game, then it's a different result altogether. So, um, our process will not change regardless of what happened in this game. We understand that to win games of cricket, we have to go through good periods of, of test cricket and something that we haven't been able to do in this game. And that's all. We're not thinking beyond that what happened in the first innings. Uh, will that have an effect or it won't? It's a fresh game the next day. As it is for us as batsmen, you score runs, it doesn't matter you're starting off on that score in the next game. You still have to work hard for your runs and you will have to work hard for your wickets as well. And what matters is which team is mentally more prepared for the, for the fight and who is ready to do the, the job on the field and do the tough work on the field to be able to get those results. Uh, the middle and lower order have uh, obviously featured a lot in these come from behind victories. Uh, as a professional team, is that something you assess in that manner? In the sense that the top order is giving the lower order a little too much to do? Um, there's, there's two ways to look at this. Um, one thing is that there are actually two ways to look at this. As top order batsmen, we have to take more responsibility and pride in the fact that we have to do most of the work. But if your lower order stands up on such regular basis, it should give confidence to us as a, as a team and the whole batting unit that once we have big partnerships up front, then these guys will do that extra job at the back as well, which makes our positions even stronger. We choose to look at the positives regardless of what situation we are in and we will continue to do that moving forward. Not putting away the things that we need to improve on. We are not a side that denies anything. We are not a side that, that hides our faults or gives excuses. We accept defeat. We accept the things that have gone wrong. And we continuously strive to improve them and come back stronger and put in those performances that we as a side should be putting in every time we step onto the field. Mumira's toss is a lot of problems when there is a big wicket for the first two days. If it's not in someone's hand, but if it's in someone's hand, Toss hard bowling 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 Sir, two things we need to understand in this situation as a bowling unit, we collectively good bowling. If we talk about fast bowlers and Ashwin, we did consistent bowling, we did good areas of bowling, three people. But I think Baki, Washi and Shahbaz, if they put so many economical spells, then the pressure can be created, the situation can be different, you can be 80, 90, 100 runs in the opposition. Plus, if you look at the batting point of view, in the first innings, if you add more than 70, 80 runs, then the match is almost equal in the situation. So, there is no need to think about anything. We will only have to keep them continuously pressure. और अगर हम वो करेंगे तो हमें पूरा बिलीफ है कि हम लोगों को वो रिजल्ट्स मिलेंगे जो हम एज अ साइड बहुत बार ले चुके हैं और आगे भी पूरा हमें कॉन्फिडेंस है कि अगर हम वो चीज़ें ठीक करेंगे तो हमारे प्रोसेसेस हमें फिर से वही रिजल्ट्स देंगे और एज अ बैटिंग यूनिट भी आपने जैसे बोला कि ज़रूरी हो जाता है कि आप जितना क्लोज आ सकें उनके टोटल के वहाँ पर एक मैच में क्रूशल जो जहाँ पर मैच पलट सकता है वो फेज हमें कैपिटलाइज करना थोड़ा और जरूरी हो जाता है एज अ बैटिंग यूनिट सो दो एक दो चीजें हैं जो हमें सोचने की और इंप्रूव करने की है उससे ज्यादा कुछ सोचने का नहीं है क्योंकि सेकंड इनिंग्स में अगर आप दोनों टीम्स की बैटिंग देखें तो काफी बराबर से मैच पैन आउट हुआ बट फर्स्ट इनिंग्स का डिफरेंस मैसिव हो गया उनकी बॉलिंग और हमारी बॉलिंग में और उनकी बैटिंग और हमारी बैटिंग में जो हमें इंप्रूव करना होगा 